guys, it's Sophie from Build Your Jungle and today I'm going to be talking all about the top 10 fastest growing houseplants in my collection and I'm going to be doing a fun thing where we count down backwards revealing the fastest growing houseplant at the very end of the video. In number 10 we have cane begonia, but specifically a very, very famous plant in my collection at the moment, my rescue begonia maculata, which I cannot believe, and I won't talk about this too much because I just talked about this a lot in our last two videos, but I cannot believe how this has gone from being literally one little two leaf clipping to this big plant, it's just exploded. They seem to do really well in normal room humidity compared to other begonias, so this is a great funky little option for someone that really enjoys a patterned leaf, wants something a bit different. They have this lovely red backs as well, like Calathea do. But generally, I've just found that these are so fast growing as long as they have very bright indirect light or light from a grow light. And they also need to be in a mix that's not too chunky, but is draining, like this has some added perlite in there. And you need to make sure that they're never actually drying out because that's when you start to get the brown crisping on them. And as you can see, she is very, pretty looking. I'm very much enjoying this plant. One thing I really like about begonias as well is if you do lose leaves at any point, they will push out new leaves from those old growth points, like philodendrons won't do that, but I'll have to show you a close-up, but there's already a lot of little new growth points coming on this, so you actually get loads of different leaves from different areas coming in at the same time, which I just, I love that. I love it so much. Very, very cool. In number nine, we have Tradescantia Sabrina specifically, because there are some varieties, like here I have a Tradescantia Nanook, and this has grown very slowly for me, but Tradescantia Sabrina, that just seems to shoot out, and I know that a lot of people have this experience with this plant. It's a plant that I've recommended in my top 10 houseplants for beginners video. It's one of those plants that tends to branch out when you prop it back, and it will very quickly just turn into a very big hanging basket and I have absolutely propped to death my other one. I've then had it in a very rescuey, neglected situation. But I assure you, if you don't neglect this house plant, it is very, very easy. Tradescantia are also great if you like a little bit of something unusual because this one in particular has very sparkly texture to the leaves that's very different. The leaf size doesn't get anything special, but it's the combination of the silhouette that they create, the leaf shape and the colours and textures of Tradescantia are just so interesting. There's some fluffy ones as well. But for this video, we're talking about five fast ones and Tradescantia Sabrina is very very much a fast growing plant for your collection. In number eight we have Monstera but only specifically some Monstera because others are tricksters such as Monstera albo which grows so slowly because of the white areas of variegation not having any chlorophyll so it can't grow to synthesize as efficiently as the normal Monstera deliciosa. Adansonii is one that is supposed to be very fast growing but mine got thripped to death years ago and I've not had one since but for me my fastest growing Monstera is Monstera dubia. It's constantly popping out a new leaf every week and it's always got a new caterpillar on the go just as it's unfurling a new leaf. So it is very, very quick and I'm already thinking it's gonna outgrow the huge plank that I've put it on very quickly. I've honestly been considering just letting it grow up my walls, but I am obviously concerned that it will damage the walls because Monstera have such, Monstera, Monstera have such hardy roots and I've seen some horror stories on Reddit. Let me know, do you think it's a bad idea? Will Monstera dubia destroy my bedroom walls? Which kind of brings me on to my next point that Monstera sticks in my mind for this as not being just a fast growing house plant when it comes to leaves, but the roots are always so fast growing and so hardy. I'm sure that if you've had Monstera before or if you have them at the moment you know how quickly they will be growing out the bottom of a pot and how much you have to upsize Monstera all the time. If you're from the UK I've also found them really easy to grow in this environment. Most of them can be grown in normal room humidity and don't require any special greenhouses or cabinet and you can get some really really cool Monstera as well that makes some very big nice centerpieces in your home like 
take the large form version of the Monstera Deliciosa, which has secondary fenestrations, and I absolutely love, but I imagine grows slower. It seems to be with Monstera, if it's not a vining type or a shingling type, if it's just a normal kind of form, uh, Monstera, the bigger it gets, the slower the growth gets, it seems to be. In seven, we have ferns. I found in general that all ferns in the genus Asparagusi grow very, very quickly. Even the uh, asparagus cetaceous that I cut right back, I absolutely cut it back to like nothing in a houseplant hospital episode that I did. And it's already, that was like seven days ago and it's already sprouted new growth. I'll stick that there for you. It's crazy. But this one, I couldn't believe. I think if I go way, way back on my phone, I'll be able to find the OG picture of what this looked like. And it shot out its first little new stem full of frondy things. It's very scientific, very, very scientific information there for you. And this just keeps getting bigger than I can ever believe. And I say this every time, it's hard to show on camera when I've not just got like a plain white wall, but it is unusual because a lot of the plants I go for, I tend to like philodendrons and anthurium and things with big solid leaves that have a really nice structured silhouette. But with this, I just, I really, really enjoy it because it is really something different. And I admired how she just fought for her life when I neglected her and just managed to adapt to the terrible conditions in this kitchen. It's very low humidity, which ferns tend to prefer higher humidity. Obviously this is one that does not care. You might find this labeled as an asparagus fern as an emerald feather fern. It's actually asparagus sprengery, I think. They're really easy to find in supermarkets and garden centers in England, and they're very cheap. This was originally a fiber, and I think I've had it maybe like a year and a half, and it's gone from this tiny plant to this huge, big plant. And it's one of those where it will slow down growing in winter, but then as soon as it gets to spring, it's just shooting out more growth than you can believe. And this plant cannot be propagated by cutting. They actually have these kind of rhizome things and you'll want to do it by separation if you're gonna do that. And you also might think, oh, it's got some new growth here coming in actually. It's a very good, affordable option. Oh, she's okay. I recommend, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I can't believe that. You just survived me and basically clawing you. It's funny to me now that this is number six because I didn't realize this would be one after each other until I actually thought about it and thought, okay, in what order am I putting these? But next I have got Skindapsis pictus agraeus, which is funny because she is right next to this emerald feather fern, but I stand by this. You might have heard Skindapsis are very slow growers. You might be thinking, Sophie, what are you saying? But trust me, this is the exception to that rule because I agree that all of my other skindapsis are very slow growers, even the silvery Anne, which is very similar to this, which is surprising because it's blister variegation, so it doesn't have, I've got a fern frond in my hair, it doesn't um, need, it doesn't lack chlorophyll like with albo variegation, so you wouldn't think, but it is very slow. But the slowest, oh, in fact, I'm not gonna tell you the slowest because I think I'm gonna make another video with the top 10 slowest plants and that will definitely, definitely be in the video. We're gonna get her down. I'm scared, she's, she's up so high. So this is her, <laughs> absolutely huge. I can't, if I want to, I can't get this all on frame. And again, speaking to the fact that this room has very bad conditions, very low light. There's a shade outside that blocks a lot of the light. So it only really gets light at this time in the afternoon. Not to mention that the bottom half of this plant is basically in the shade over there, trailing off over the table. It's also in a really bad mix. It needs to be repotted. And you can see a couple of 
the leaves are yellowing on the top. I think because they don't get any light when they're tucked inside this pot. Because this is in a plastic planter, but it's all oh, a fair bit smaller. So it really could do with being a potter. Obviously, the less light that you give this plant, the slower it will grow, but I'm saying that and mine doesn't get that much light and it's grown so quickly. With Skindapsis, it's similar to Epipremnum in the sense that they prefer to dry out a bit more than other aeroids, but not completely before being watered. But the thing that I like about Skindapsis as opposed to Epipremnum is that the leaves, specifically the leaves near the pot, will just slightly curl when it needs watering. So it's a little reminder if you forget. It kind of reminds me of camo and people were really really obsessed with the Skindapsis Pictus tricolor I think it was that it was this camo plant and people were paying insane prices for it years ago but these are just as beautiful I love it I think it's something really unusual it also reminds me a bit of like snake skin and it just brings something really nice vibes to this room like there's a reason I like to film in front of this shelf I just think it's lovely and obviously because it grows so quickly and my housemates don't want us to cut it I am going to be trailing it just all over the walls and just seeing what happens from there. She's not living her best life and could kind of just do with more room to fly. Next I have a member of the royal family joining me. It is Philodendron Pink Princess and I can't believe how tall she is now. This is a pink princess that is like one third of a pink princess that I got from a reduced thing at Langlands, I think, and it was really covered in thrips and obviously I've treated it, kept this section for myself because I thought it had really decent amounts of pink in it and it's actually kept giving me some really nice sections of pink as it's kept growing. The leaf size has decreased quite a bit. If you give this plant a moss pole as opposed to a little support that I've got here, it will really size up for you quite quickly. It's just been one of those things that I've kept putting off. This plant went dormant last winter, but now it's just been popping out so many leaves for me again. And every time one's unfailing, oh, I almost hit myself in the eye. That's such a pretty leaf. Every time that it's unfailing a new leaf, it's already got another one trying to pop on out. It's a really beautiful, kind of almost Halloween-y plant. I know you might think, how can pink be Halloween-y? But I just think the leaves are very dark and I get very spooky, witchy vibes from this plant. It gets a lot of compliments and I love her very much. And these used to be so expensive. I remember when I worked in this plant shop in Leeds and it was a hundred and fifty pounds one that was just like that bottom section in size and now you can get them really cheap. I think you can get babies for like six pounds. If you want really high variegation you can also get the Philodendron Pink Princess marble or it might be galaxy marble and those are plants that have been selected for really high variegation and over time they've been able to successfully and consistently cultivate this plant to have this really high levels of variegation so that is a genuine thing. This time next year I honestly don't know how tall she's gonna be. I don't think she'll fit in the frame with me anymore but I will say this is one that does well when it's outgrowing the support and that's why I think that I've been so lazy in not doing it it's because most plants like I have my philodendron Belmox fantasy it just totally bent off a support it's outgrown some of them can't take it like the brantianum it can't take it it was all roller coastering all over the place with its stem this one has a much sturdier thicker stem so she does all right she does all right for herself well, i have just noticed it's a bit sad that I'm losing the lowest leaf i had to treat some of these with hydrogen peroxide the thrips and whenever that happens and it's the combination of having to go through that and then also not fertilizing for a bit when they had thrips it's obviously had to give up one of its pretty leaves but 
She's so beautiful. For number four, this is going to be a general grouping because there are so many of them in this house. And I think a lot of people would have put this higher up on the list, but this is, in my experience, the number four, and it is Pothos or Epipremnum, but not including Epipremnum pinnatum because for me, those grow a lot slower. Like I've got Epipremnum pinnatum dark blue form and that just grows really slowly compared to the others. But this one has put out, this is the Neon Pothos, and this has put out all of this new growth in our care. There's also an Epipremnum Aureum Golden Pothos. Uh, I have one in my room, but also Aaron's got one, Aaron and Harry have one in the office, in the loft. It's very dark and very, very hot, and it still manages to just keep growing, and I'm always surprised. They don't require a great amount of light, but again, the more light that you give them, the faster that they will grow. With ones of variegation, like Golden Pothos, Epipremnum Aureum, having the yellow variegation, the more light that you give it, the more variegated it will be. If it's in really low light for a long time, then it can often revert and have just green areas of leaves, which I believe has happened on the one that's behind the Anthurium in my room at the moment, because it does not get much light, to be honest. I always forget the name of this one. I think it's a Snow Queen Pothos. That's what it was sold to me as anyway. That's very slow growing and I'm not surprised because most of the leaf is white and it's just got little speckles of areas of chlorophyll in it. So that one grows very, very slowly. I would highly recommend Neon and also uh, Golden. It feels weird to abbreviate it like that. The next plant's very dusty, so I'm gonna insert it in a B-roll after I've given it a shower. And it's Raphidophora cursiva. And I was saying in Houseplant Hospital that it was literally grown all the way around my window and I got so many propagations out of it. And I'm just kicking myself for not having a picture of how much it had grown. And I must say, it is a bathroom plant, which means it gets neglected. For a Raphidophora, it definitely goes too long with me, in between me watering it a lot of the time and it still does really really well and it has beautiful fenestrations. I find if you buy one that's not fenestrated it's very easy to get the leaves to become fenestrated very quickly without doing much at all. I think it's really just about light with this plant. The area it was in before was a lot dimmer and it used to grow at more of a moderate pace and as soon as I've moved it this year it's just exploded. It surprised us all really. They grew really easily in water very very quickly as well which I really like because it makes my life easier when I don't have to mess about with moss and various other things constantly. It's an easy one. It's also had thrips on it a lot, but they've not managed to actually damage the plant somehow. So it's a hardy thing. And I recently took a really big cutting, which was the top. It was the very top section that was in the brightest light from the bathroom window and the leaf was like this big. And I'm really excited. It's rooting really well. And I'm gonna see if I can get it to size up on a moss pole. But basically most Raphidophora are fast growing, but the two that I would recommend for this section as the fastest growing, it's Raphidophora decursiva that I've just been talking about. And then also Raphidophora tetrasperma, which is sometimes known as Monstera minima. I've had that before. It was succumbed to being totally forgotten about in my loft ages ago and it just got absolutely fried. But before that happened, it was very hardy, even when I forgot to water it. It kept making a comeback, the roots grew very quickly and they just grow very, very quickly. I think that if you go digging around on the internet and you don't even have to dig very deep, you will just find a lot of people saying, agreeing that this is a very fast growing plant. It is normally grown as a crawling plant, but there is nothing to say that you can't grow this plant any way you want, up any kind of support, as grow it trailing, grow it however you want, and I think it will do fine, honestly, because it's versatile. Next, I have one of my favorite plants in my collection, and I'm so proud because this was initially a almost completely reverted plant. It had about five full green leaves and one with a tiny bit of variegation, and I chopped it back to that and started a separate plant from that, and it's since become this beautiful beautiful variegated plant. Now it's got going, like once it developed its proper root system, which it needs repotting again, 
it just went for it. It really went for it. This is another one that it not only branches out when you cut it, but also it puts out multiple new leaves at once, which I love. You never know what kind of variegation you're going to get. And I guess this also applies to, so this is Philodendron Bale Marks Variegata but also the normal philodendron burl marks grows just as quickly. So it may take a little bit for the cutting to get established, but once you truly have a plant this, like as soon as this was three leaves, it was constant, multiple leaves every week. Like I've had to, it's lost about four leaves this year at different points because of the rips. But honestly, one of my favorite plants, so rewarding to watch it grow. Because it's a philodendron, it just needs like a chunky mix and not to completely dry out. I water it when it's dry about down to here. And I think you'll find that if you look in plant groups on Facebook or ask people and say you're in search of this plant, it can be quite inexpensive just to obtain a small clipping of this because I still think that some of the plant shops are really overcharging for the variegated version of this plant, especially considering how quickly it grows. Obviously it's fast growing though, or it wouldn't be the number two fastest growing plant in this video, in my collection. I know some people really don't like variegation though, but if you are a variegation lover, it's a beautiful plant. And I have to say that even though it lost those leaves to thrips, there had been thrips on other leaves and they didn't manage to damage it. So again, I do think think that the rips struggle a bit more with the uh, kind of thicker leaved philodendrons. It takes them a bit longer to really get in there, I think. That's just my observation though. The winner of the fastest growing plant in my collection goes to Plectranthus australis, or it's also known as Swedish ivy. I hope that I can find a picture of this. It was literally, I bought it off a, pr a, prant, a plant group from someone and they sent me three cuttings and two of them had rotted in transition, in, in transport, I don't know. The size of this was like this. It was a variegated cutting, so this plant actually is variegated. You will find areas of it that are variegated. It's not super high, some here as well. It's very pretty. Um, it was the high variegated cuttings that died for me. I don't know if it's just that the, cause the green, it really is the green, uh, all green that's taken off here massively. Why this is unbelievable is because this plant was the most like, absolutely 100% the most neglected plant in my collection because I forgot it existed for two years. It was behind a box for some reason in the loft. It was in semi-hydro, but obviously all the water had evaporated. It had no water at all, at all for a year. It's very dry and hot in there. I don't understand. I, I saw it, it was wilted over. I was gonna just prop it and start it again and see if I could somehow bring it back to life. But with that existing root system completely perked back up the next day and I thought, Really? That's impressive. Firstly, it grew massively tall with very, very large leaves. And then it branched off from under all of these leaves to make this huge, big, full plant. And it's been so fast to do it. It just grows like a weed. I have propagated this a lot. I've sold some of them. I've still got about three of the plants of it upstairs. In fact, I can confirm that this plant is so fast growing that I actually had no choice but to prop it because the root system hadn't grown big enough to support the huge amount of foliage it put out. So it was wilting at the top even when it had been watered. So I had to prop it in the end and it's just straight away, it always just wants to pop out more, more leaves. My aim when I bought this was to have a trailing basket of it because I'd seen someone with a trailing basket of the non-variegated one and I thought it was beautiful. In hindsight now, I don't really understand how they got it to grow like that because it's obviously very high humidity in my bedroom and the aerial roots, like the moisture that this plant likes, like, it puts out far too many aerials for it to be able to hang in a way that I thought that it would. And it grows in a very kind of just doing its own thing, free for all kind of way. And at first 
I was a bit annoyed that it wasn't going to be how I wanted it to be. A lot of people put these up moss poles and they can just climb out that, which I can understand why now that I've seen all these <laughs> aerial routes. But honestly, I love this now. I think it's so cool and just unusual and weird. And they're really easy to prop and share because of how fast they grow. And I would love to know, does anyone else have one of these? Does anyone else find that it is the fastest growing plant in their collection and just goes absolutely so fast? I'll show you some more little clips of the variegation because it is pretty and I think that I should probably try and prop a variegated plant out of this, but for the moment I'm just gonna let it be because it's a little unusual one and I am going to have to repot this soon. I am eternally impressed by you, but as fast as you are and really unusual and cool, doesn't beat this for me in terms of how much I love the plants because I, oh, I really love her, but so fast. So anyway, that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing me talking about the fastest growing plants in my collection. Let me know if you'd like me to make a video about the slowest growing plants in my collection. At the moment I'm posting shorts whenever I'm able to and long form content on Friday so please hit that button and subscribe to be notified when I next make a planty video. I also post every day on Instagram, there's all kinds of funky stuff on there so feel free to check that out and if you feel like buying some house planty art prints then please visit my website, it's buildyourjungle.com and I hope you have a wonderful day with all your fast growing plants. Please let me know what your fastest growing plant is and I will see you another time.